Hey folks, welcome back. This is Lucid, and we're jumping back into our game with Airmore. And yeah, things are going pretty well so far. Um, we're doing some nice luxury things, like empowering Putra Skater and Fire. And uh, we had done a trade with Naba. He had some death gems lying around, uh, and I think we traded him uh, Fire. I'm thinking he wants to steal, steal Sakonate's Eternal Pyre. Uh, we traded him Fire, and I'll probably steal it back. Um, we traded him fire and nature and, uh, oh gosh, no, fire, air, and astral is what we traded. Satis gave me some death gems and 16 fire gems. Uh, this is payment for, he didn't have enough death gems for the skull staff that I gave him, which I think he, uh, donated to Sakane in a final defense. Uh, so anyway, this is like four to one, I can alchemize him to get death. But he gave these to me in case I would rather have the fire, which I probably would. So that's cool. Uh, I mean, for him it doesn't matter because he's basically done with the game now. Uh, Sakne has has delivered the uh, the walrus punch, the knockout blow. And uh, yeah, we're also doing more empowering. We've got winter empowered in air, um, so he can now do wind of death. Uh, I mean, if I have it researched. But uh, we'll see what we end up using him for. Um, I'm going to empower him in air again. And then he will be able to cloud trap these. And with a proper kit, we'll be able to pick off rogue armies. And that'll be pretty useful for like 10 or, 10 or 15 turns. So I'll have to worry about mind hunt. Um, so that'll be nice. What else? Um, Archbishops twice. And uh, we have attacked Satis, and that is because uh, after he lost his battle last turn, uh, where he was trying to do a fatigue play and it didn't work because he couldn't get enough skeletons because of fire shield uh, Anakites. Um, anyway, he's like, yeah, I'm done. You can go ahead and attack me. And so uh, we went and attacked him, and the two provinces on my border are pretty cool. One of them is a throne, the Silver Throne. And uh, this also happens to be in a cave, so our undead are super effective. Very, very nice. Um, and we also took control of Keisha. I can't remember what this is. Where's Keisha? Here. Um, and then we have a few battles. Uh, let's see if any of them are worth watching. We have this one where we raid Melma. What I'm basically trying to do this turn is lock down a lot of his forts. And if I'm successful, uh, it will allow me to make some cool plays. Um, here, well, at the end of last turn, I, I think. I, I hope I didn't skip a turn. I'm, there's a chance I skipped a turn. Um, because I didn't go back and check. But anyway. Um, I, had, I had locked him in, uh, in his cap. And that allowed me to go after two of his forts. So he breaks out of his cap with 600 long dead. I kind of feel like he isn't picking up on my game that I'm locking him in his forts every single turn, especially his cap. Um, so it could be that or apathy. Um, but I wonder if he's just logging in like, shit. You're like surprised. He's locked me in my fort again. That's what all these battles are. Like this is a battle locking him in his fort. And we get their commander, and they route. Um, that was Morovia. Down here, <clears throat> this is uh, just, I think he has one PD in some some province. Um, and then there's a battle in Jotunheim. And, um, yeah, a little star child sticking their head in. Yo, what's up, dude? And this is the Jotunheim god. It is... Uh, you can see the blast. They've got MR3, which is pretty good for fighting Grelay and then also for like fighting a Blood Vengeance air more, and regeneration and affliction resistance. So I kind of dig this. Uh, pretty good for turbo communioning because your Scrotty aren't going to get quite as afflicted as quickly. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're still going to get super afflicted. And the MR is really nice for a lot of things. So I, I do dig this bless. Pretty cool Jotunheim build uh, for this game. And he's got two gauges. Um, notably, well, I don't know that it would matter. Yeah, it wouldn't matter. But uh, 
you know, he could do swarm and stuff. He had a bunch of nature gems. I don't really know what you would do. I think here you want to have an anti-magic amulet at least. Because you're fighting for away. He can soul slay you. He can also probably magic duel you. And then try to get off. I mean. Or earthquake might be your best thing. Like this probably. Yeah, I'd probably do anti-magic amulet. Um, fill this shit up with earth gems. Put everything I have into earth gems. And... Um, Power of sphere, uh, script would be resist ma or resist magic resistance. I can't talk. Uh, power of spheres, summon earth power. Um, that's three. And then I would probably drop earthquakes. So yeah, it may be better to do. I'm not sure. It may be better to skip power spheres and just do earth power and then earthquakes. Depends. Um, yeah, depend. I mean, if you have enough earth gems, it might be better. Anyway, I'd probably do something like that. I think versus a big uh, relay and stack, that's probably your best bet. But if he sends like a, I mean, relay's not going to send a thug in here to kill this though. He may send magic duelers, but if that happens, you're fucked anyway. There's nothing you can do. Okay, so anyway, um, Relay seeing what's in there before he commits. Uh, he's got an enormous stack on here. Look at this, guys. 600 units, mostly Meteorite Guard. Sometimes you'll have a big uh, squid army emerge from the sea, and it will be mostly uh, Lobo Guard. And Lobo Guard are great because they're easy to mass. They are a very cheap way to put um, HP on the battlefield. And they're mindless, so you don't have to worry about them running or they're not uh, susceptible to morale plays so that's great but meteorite guard are just phenomenal they're really great but they're hard to mass so seeing this many at once i don't know if i've ever seen this many at once this is a shit ton of meteorite guard and that's scary um this is a very hard stack to deal with there's you know a lot of times especially like the more experienced you get in dominions you're you don't really want to take straight fights. Like, you want to kind of cheese your way to victory. And, it, and what I mean by, you know, like, send a super combatant at something. Like, do something, you know, assassinate. Do something so that you're taking an asymmetrical fight. Like, you don't really want to trade out units one for one in, like, an honorable way. Um, and this is a, this kind of stack from Relay is extremely hard to cheese. Like, there's not many ways to cheese it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, you kind of have to fight it. And you get basically one shot. <laughs> I mean, this is a scary, scary army. And they pop out of the sea and they come running for your capital. I feel for Jotunheim. I don't know what you do. This is a, I mean, Jotunheim's not a good matchup. I mean, he at least he has MR and is blessed, but... I don't even know what you do. I, I mean... I think the options, and I think I mentioned it to Jotunheim this turn, like, because he's got some guys that are going to be coming in for the final fight, but you can do, like, mass bloodletting, maybe. Like, mass bloodletting. And to do it really in mass, um, you have to account for a lot of your blood slaves dying, so you have to bring tons of blood slaves. Um, and that's an option. You could potentially HP route them. Like, you can't super combat or thug against them. Um, and this is just such a scary army that you're going to have a very, very hard time, um, fighting it conventionally. And if you do the conventional fight, you know, Jotunheim might be able to pull it off. Um, but they would probably need to combine it with a PDE dump and their entire army, and they would have to hope they have some good stuff researched, you know, like a turbo communion behind a PD dump with their main army. I mean... This is a scary, scary stack. Uh, so anyway, we'll see next turn what is all in it. Because um, right now we just know there's Star Children, Slave Mages, Star Spawn, and Meteorite Guard. Um, okay. And we have our battles in the fort. So we had pinned in last turn um, his army into his cap, which was excellent for us. 
And then we can have these fights and we don't really have to worry about uh, his cap army, which is disgusting, coming out and killing us. You know, his cap army is like 3k undead and then, uh, importantly, a lot of mages. Okay, he's got dust to dust going on. Now, the dust to dust is coming from... I think this guy can cast it with gems. I thought there might be a Grand Thaumaturg in here somewhere, but I think it's just this, these two guys with gems. Uh, but you can see they wither bones and immediately die. Uh, but those wither bones killed a lot of things. We, I didn't show you, but they, they took out a fair amount of my sacreds. And so now we've got sacreds and a bottleneck. Um, with these priests zapping them with banishment. And you can see they're gradually getting picked off. So this is kind of what we did before, but here we don't have lictors. It's all these knights, and these knights are not as beefy as lictors. Um, and, yeah, I don't think we have very much magic resistance cast on them either. In fact, I don't think this guy's doing anything. One of the things with uh, off-script uh, improved casting AI is it stops power of the sepulcher, I mean protection of the sepulcher, which on for some nations like Scalaria is nice. It's like a Scalaria buff because that way their mages will do more useful things than sitting there spamming it. Um, but for us, it's not necessarily great because there's really nothing better for him to do right now than to spam it out. So we will just kind of accept this. Um, unfortunately, we're getting the shit banished out of us. And this would be, you know, having anti-magic or having better MR would make a huge difference here. And I don't know how many of these guys... I know we cast it at least once. Yeah, okay, that guy has it, so he got the buff. Um, and he has Rutarius mixed, mixed up here in the front, and they hurt. So, if they hit, you know, we, we're, there's a very good chance we die from that. Now, fortunately, we still have pretty good defense, but with enough time, um, these Retarius will do a lot of damage. Um, and we're, we're not killing that many at a time. Now, a lot of these guys are running, um, or they've been killed. So, we're down to right now four priests. We got another one, we're down to three priests. We got another one, we're down to two priests. Right now it's looking like we're gonna win. It's quite close, we've lost a lot. Um, we're getting near the HP rep threshold, which means our guys start to zone in. This guy just got tagged. He's down to one HP. He's dead, and this is the only guy left. He's already taken damage, but he's not dead. I think we're right at the HP rep threshold. And this one guy's just gotten so lucky. the HP rep threshold, so our guys are dissolving. We probably should have won this. Um, I think, like, if we did it ten times, I probably would have won eight times, is my guess. But there were more, you know, I didn't think there was quite this much in some, but uh, what are we going to do? Uh, there's some things I liked about what he did. I like that he put death gems on his guys to get some wither bones out. We can watch it again. I'll just show you the wither bones casting at the beginning. Because that did, that did a lot of damage. Um, and even though they died from it, um, look at that. You saw, look at that Wither Bones cast. It killed so many. And that might, have, that easily was the difference between him winning or losing. Um, because, like, all these sacreds he just killed with that, um, those would have been easily enough to keep me from getting HP routed and to get, uh, more of the priests kind of to blood vengeance themselves to death. So, uh, anyway, they're, they're dead now, but you can see they blew up a, probably, like, we could probably see. Um, these guys, the Thaumaturgs, they killed 22 sacreds. They killed a lot of my sacreds. Now, not all these were sacreds, but a lot of them were. So anyway, that was kind of cool. Um, 
But what is not cool is we failed to take the fort. Though we killed about everything inside. There's just one priest that survived this whole thing. Um, and then some of his long dead survived. But the long dead's not really a big deal. Um, this battle was right here. So it's this fort. Um, adjacent to this other one, which we were successful in storming. And here it's a similar story in terms of what's inside. I think he has a Grand Thaumaturg here. So he has four Thaumaturgs in the back. There's more Mage support. He's got this Grand Thaumaturg here with some Death Gems. And a Pearl. I'm wondering if he's got a Communion set up. We'll see. I had sent him a message a few turns ago. Being like, Grippa, I'm going to revoke your, uh, your Skeleton License if you don't start using your Communion as well kidding with him but uh anyway so he's a communion master he's got four slaves so he's actually a pretty powerful communion master um he's got another guy up here communion mastered and another guy here communion mastered so he's, it looks like he's got three masters and then a bunch of cultists and then four slaves and some gems so i'm expecting to see anti-magic come up which would be important for keeping his mages from killing themselves. So, oh no, that's probably the spheres. It doesn't look like he did anti-magic then, unless he has it on one of these guys. I don't know if he knows. I don't think he knows. Okay. Wither Bones, which was extremely effective, but, I mean... Look at all this damage it did. It just nuked the shit out of my guys. Lictors, fortunately, are strong enough to take a hit from Wither Bones. Um, but, I mean, these guys each popped. They just died. Now, if you're... What should he have done? He needed to cast Anti-Magic. Oh, wait, he did. Or wait, were they doing Unholy Protection? Okay, yeah, not everybody has it. So, they're doing some kind of spell. Um... I think the communion's over now. All the masters are dead. Um, so I think these guys... Do they wake up? How do they wake up when they... Um, so yeah, anyway, very important he did anti-magic. He wouldn't even want to cast where the bones to anti-magic goes up. It's very possible he doesn't know that anti-magic counters blood vengeance. Uh, yeah, like I said, he hasn't been around many years. Um, but he's playing Scalaria, so I, I don't feel too bad about it. Um, but yeah, anti-magic, one of the best ways to deal with blood vengeance, makes it significantly less effective. Significantly. Like, over, it's going to make it at least half as effective. Maybe even more. I'm not, I'm not totally sure on the map. It probably depends what your MR is, but... It's a major, 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 major thing. Um, and, you know, it stacks on itself. So, if he got anti-magic off, I don't think he would have won this fight, but um, if he got anti-magic off, then not only would these guys be less likely to die from blood dungeons, his dudes, but his mages would have. Uh, now he's spamming Wither Bones at all these Blood Vengeance Lictors, they're still going to die. Unless they had a ton of MR gear, or like plus HP gear, HP gear and regen. Because Wither Bones does so much damage, and that's all going to get reflected back. But, um, they would have, they, they all died in their first cast. So they would have probably gotten two or three casts off, um, if they had Wither Bones, if they had Anti-Magic up. Maybe. Maybe. Because Wither Bones being Lictors is a very fast way to die if you're a human mage uh lictors with blood vengeance so anyway um there's no mages or priests we're just gonna slowly chew our way through this um these guys have woken up in the back and uh i think somebody cast power of the sphere so when they wake up they all wake up with death too which means they can do horde of skeletons and uh we're gonna slowly chew our way through everything up here at the front um, but it's being replenished, so it's a little bit of a math thing. If they had more quarter skeletons casters, it's possible that, uh, they could time out the battle here and then we would knock it forth. But, uh, we slowly get through and we take it. So, uh, we were one for two for forts, which is too bad. I really would have liked to have gotten this other fort, but, uh, we were not going to complain. 
Um, a leader of a horror cult is spreading blasphemous secrets. Uh, unless found in doubt what the cult will grow in power and influence. So, the fucking horror cults, man. Um, it's okay. We're pillaging this to the ground. I don't want Yes to get it. Uh, so we're pillaging it. I think we got six income from it or something. Or 20, maybe. 17. Um, but Yes in our nap is expiring next turn. We can attack. Not this turn we can put in attack orders. Next turn we can't. So might as well just pillage this down. I'll send my dominion anyway. Um, and we'll get some ghouls too. And uh, that's going to be that for there. Continuing with events. Um, we found the secret about of a warlock. And time to interrupt his sinister plans. I think they were this summoning a demon lord or something. Uh, you can send a blood mage and you might get plus one blood and they might die. My only blood mage, my god, I don't think we're going to do that. Uh, we got attacked by some barbs. Barbs got wrecked. Um, here's the blood mage we found. He had a bunch of imps. Unfortunately, I think they're killing Mount King of mine. Blood three, dude. Unfortunately, we had dudes here so we don't lose the province. Uh, we lost some ghouls. We lost uh, Mount King. Uh, False Prophet we found. I forget where this guy was. Oh, he was in Morn also. So we found this dude. Um, and then I think he also had friends. Another False Prophet. So Morn apparently has attracted a lot of bad events that haven't been dealt with. Uh, it's got two False Prophets. Let's just see what's happened here. So coming back to the beginning. A mysterious cult has gained influence. Um, one second. A mysterious cult has gained influence. I think this is the start of the horror cult. Yeah, this is the start of the horror cult. Next event in the horror cult. Um, horror cult has taken root. Once you have it, I don't think you can get rid of it. So... We'll have to be pretty cautious about if we ever put a fort up here. If we hold on to it in the long run, it might just be a province that isn't worth much. It gets owned by the... Oh. Sorry, yawn. Uh, they get owned by the horrors for the rest of the game. Um, horror cult attacking. Weird. I don't see the... Um, I don't see the event for the false prophet, um, for the heretics, basically. Oh, well. Um, killing this is okay. It's going to end up, uh, now that we got these heretics out, uh, it is going to increase our dominion spread this way into Yis and Nazca. Um, which is fine. Once the war starts with Yes, we'll come over here and kill all his temples, and then our dominion's going to flood through while he's trying to unsuccessfully take our forts. Um, so that is basically the play. Um, and we are finding... I mean, we're killing 100 gold of Naba scouts damn near every turn. And this, is, this is 125 gold of Nava Scouts and the Boss Scouts. I know it's 100, they're 20 each. So, yeah, that's kind of a lot. It's not a lot for one turn, but when it happens every turn, it's like a, you know, noticeable part of a lot of people's incomes. Definitely would be a noticeable part of mine if I lost 100 gold a turn. Um, anyway, we'll take the donation. Uh, I think that's about it for what we're going to talk about for events. So what do we do over here? Um, Scalaria has stuck their head back out of their cap. Um, everywhere we look, there's more undead. Here's another 750 over here for Scalaria. And um, we can see now that we have invaded this Satis land that Ashdod is well on his way to conquering Satis. We've got a, a Hashmal thug. Hashmals are pretty efficient little thugs. So uh, anyway, we've, we've got him here. And I'm not going to be too greedy. I mean, okay, we're being very greedy. But uh, we're not going to try to, like, get this. But I expect he's going to try to come in before I can vulture anymore. Um, but just getting an army on top of the throne right here is going to be very nice. Because 
we kind of laid claim to it. And like Relay, we have a, a nap with, so if he's going to knock me off, he would have to break his nap or be a sneaky bastard. Um, there's um, also there's a death site here, which is pretty nice. And there's a thing that's going to di reveal Dominion score graphs, which is kind of the least useful of the score graphs, but so be it. Um, and then an Astral Pearl, and it's a Silver Throne, which gives me access to these guys, which for Amor is actually kind of huge, because I'm already going for Enchantment 6 for Rigor Mortis. But this will give me Mass Flight, and Mass Flight Lictors, um, and general kind of Skeleton Hordes. Uh, it will be a very, 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 very good tool for dealing with a lot of things. Now, uh, I, they are going to have the problem that they can be magic dueled. Um, so trying to use them against like Relay or Naba or Ashdod, uh, Ashdod we might be able to use them against, but Relay and Naba probably won't work because they probably, if they're fighting me, should have magic duelers in every single army. Um, so I'm not sure the best way to deal with that. There's not really a lot of great ways to deal with that. Um, you know, life after death is one way, but magic duel happens before that. So, yeah. Still would be good to have. Sight search air better. I mean, they're just, they're pretty useful. And, you know, at least, like, force a guy to do magic duel. Like, why don't we do that? Let's just, let's force him to deploy the counters. Um... And then the 100 gold per turn is not going to be... Uh, we certainly won't mind having that. Now, uh, Satis told me they have uh, evacu evacuated... Evacuated? Evacuated um, this province. So uh, they're going in for a last... They said they're going in for a last... Where's their capital even? I think it's up here. Here it is. They're going in for a last-ditch defense on their cap. So they said, ah, uh, they lost their last major battle. So now they're pulling literally everything for a final defense. But, it, I mean, they're not going to win that final defense. They know that. They've kind of blown their... They've, like, used all their mages, etc. But anyway, they're doing that. So we're going to come in and yoink this. Um, we also got this province. And I had heard... There were there were little whispers that somebody had score graphs. And, indeed, this is where they were coming from. Um, so this reveals mundane score graphs, which are very, very useful score graphs. And with that, guys, I will treat us to taking a peek. Um, first of all, the province score graph. You can see we were the biggest. Pangea was the biggest out of expansion. Um, but then, kind of, we got big as they got small, but Pangea actually had a nice little resurgence over here. Where, I think this was Nazca attacking them, and they were, like, losing ground against Nazca. I think they gained some of the ground back against Nazca, and then they also gained ground versus me. But maybe they didn't gain ground, because you can see I was going down here while they were going up. He he whooped my ass at the beginning of this war. So that was kind of what happened here. I don't think he gained all the ground back versus Nazca, but he gained some of it. Uh, and then we killed his main stack that he had invading us, and then things went downhill very, very, very quickly. Um, once that big stack of his was dead, then we could go like go go nuts on the offense, and that's what we did. You can see his steep decline was marched by my steep uptick. If we look at Nazca, who was my partner in crime for a lot of this, um, you can see it was going well for them. At, where's Nazca? You can see it was going well for them at the beginning of the war. Um, you can see them going up as Pangea was going down, but about midway through, once. Um, Pangea was basically making his resurgence. He was invading me. He was taking his land back from Naba. He had stolen some Incas. Um, I think he had inflicted a fair amount of attrition on Nazca. Um, Nazca started decreasing in size. And uh, the real decrease in size started when Yis attacked Nazca. And you can see that happening right here. So the real Nazca downfall from here to here was when Yis attacked Nazca. Um, and then I attacked Nazca, I think, around here-ish. I think this was the Nazca attack, but I'm not sure. We can tell, actually. 
yeah, this was this is when I attacked Nazca. But at this point, you can see Yis was already uh, demolishing. I mean, he was he was eating well into Nazca right here. So anyway, um, and Nazca's armies were basically dead. And that's this is kind of what happens is once your armies are dead, then the province graph the province graph typically lags behind armies. Like as soon as your armies are all dead, like province graph swings so fast. Uh, anyway. But yeah, after that, man, we've been like major number one position for provinces, major number one position. Other people have been growing. I thought, I didn't think my lead was this big. Um, I thought we were much closer to Relay in size, but Relay, who's been playing very aggressively, not being passive at all, you can see they're getting significantly bigger and they're about to get bigger again because they're about to, the same thing has just happened right here again with uh, Jotunheim that happened you know, with Pangea, like once the armies die, Jotunheim is right here. But the next few turns, he's just going to dive bomb because he's going to try to defend his cap. He probably won't make it. And then everything is going to fall. All his neighbors are going to vulture all this. So he's right at the precipice of completely falling off. Um, so anyway, there's that. Um, also of note is Ashdod, which is Sakane. And you can see he was playing very passive. He did like a little bit of vulturing here and there on different neighbors. You know, took this, took that, just pecking away, but mostly just powering up. And now here he went after Satis, had a big alpha strike on Satis. You can see that's matched here on the Satis graph. And um, yeah. Now Scalaria is the other one I want to look at because it's a big part of kind of our story. Let's kind of get rid of some of these. Let's get rid of... Um, We'll get rid of Nazca. Satis we'll get rid of here because we kind of already talked about them. And um, we'll get Fascia we actually should talk about. So anyway, Scalaria, I'm flashing them up. You can see they were like middle of the pack. They don't look terribly assuming. They were kind of fighting here with uh, with Satis. Um, where's Scalaria? So as Satis went down a little bit, Scalaria went up a little bit. Anyway, they're having little skirmishes. But Satis been like fighting to hang in there with Scalaria attacking them, uh, Faedod attacking them. Where's Faedod? Or Facia, sorry. Um, yeah. Anyway, you can see Facia was attacking them. This was like very bad for Satis. And after that, uh, Satis took a lot of his stuff back. He's just been fighting for existence. And then right over here is when Relay attacks Facia, and Facia just gets like wiped off the face of the planet with uh, like a couple Relay attacks. So anyway, there was that happening, and uh, Satis continues to kind of hang in there until Sakane just descends from the heavens with I think a bunch of magic phase attacks, like a huge alpha strike. This is like eight or nine provinces he took, and he might have attempted more but not fully taken them. Um, anyway just wrecked Satis. Um, but then Satis had like a little resurgence where he kind of came back and took some stuff and then like that. Um, so anyway, that's that story. But anyway, he's looking good now, Ashdod. He's definitely, he's one of the top three, four um, players now. Um, if we look at Naba, Naba had been kind of middle of the pack uh, kind of lower middle for expansion, but not... I mean, everybody kind of got about the same size. And then, um, again, kind of hanging out through the mid-game, kind of picked around here, and then they fought with end. And you can see just... I think this was the opening salve of the world, war. You can see these kind of mirroring each other. Uh, well, actually, no, the opening salvo was here. So you can see at the beginning... Um, it looks like the province trading, so they're at the beginning there, let me get everybody gone except for these guys. Um, I think this is when the opening salvo is. And basically from the beginning, Nabag gets a territory exchange advantage. And I don't know who started it. I think, I can't remember. It looks like it, just from the graph, that Nabas started it. 
But anyway, they get ahead, but then they're like grinding back and forth, and it's not very clear who's ahead. Um, and this basically continues, and then Nabon like loses some of their edge, and they're the same size again. And it looks like it's maybe going in the favor of End. Uh, and I think this critical juncture, this critical event right here, is the when he End failed to take Nabon's capital. And then shortly after this, things like Wrathful Skies and stuff came out, and then it was just the death knell of uh, of End. So there's that. Um, here we'll show Relay and um, Fadod, and you can see anyway, this was an extremely fortuitous event for Relay. Um, and then over here, he's attacking Jotunheim. So we'll throw in Jotunheim graph. You can see these mirror each other. And so yeah, that puts the big players left in the game now are Relay and Yis and me and Ashdod in terms of size. These are the big players. Scalaria, even though they're almost dead in terms of province count, uh, in army craft, they are not dead. Um, and I think we'll go to that. We'll look at that, this one next. Um, army size. This is me. And before you're like, holy shit, Lucid, that's a lot of dudes. I want you to first look at Scalaria. All right, this is like a slow mine is like a slow exponential growth right like not very fast moving like a slow exponential growth scalaria's is this like i don't even i don't know the math terms very well quadratic i don't know it's a it's growing with a much higher exponential rate it's just bending steeply upwards, right? And we attacked just as it was continuing. Like, if it did, we didn't do it, it would be, like, right here, right? Um, and the rate at which it grows every turn is just phenomenal. So, anyway, this is about when we attacked uh, Jotunheim and I. And, yeah, we put major, major dents. But you can see, even though we got them down to here, like, oh, we killed a ton of undead. Look how much it grows from here to here. Compare this to the slope on my graph. Like... Right here, the slope is how many I'm getting a turn. Even once we have him beaten down here, his slope is still as high as my slope once I'm up here. Um, and this is with me raiding, trying to like stop cultists from producing all of this stuff. Every turn we have to kill a lot because he's like a. It's kind of, I was joking around. It's kind of like a crackhead, right? You think with the Dave Chappelle thing, like he. <laughs> I forget exactly how he says it, but you knock them down, they get right back up. And that's exactly what this is for this army graph. I mean, it does not stay down. Boink, back up, boink, back up, right? And just constant, I haven't been able to get, look at it. It's still, he's damn near his peak. And I've been killing thousands every, you know, almost every turn. Um, So yeah, and then obviously we're huge. Um, but a lot of mine is not really military power. Like Scalaria's is all military power. Um, a lot of my, most of mine are ghouls. Like, if you had to say how much of mine is ghouls versus other stuff, I think ghouls is up to here, right? And this much is, like, military power. So if you compare, like, numbers, which, again, I have sacreds, which are better, but, like, just pure units, which I'll put in armies, I'm probably, like, right here compared to Scalaria. I still have fewer units that I can put in armies than Scalaria, I think. Now, you can put ghouls in armies, but they suck. Uh, they have low MR, they have not great combat stats and no armor. So, but they're very good at holding up fort walls. So anyway, we have this, this graph for me represents mostly a defensive advantage, but it's only good at defending against people than, other than Scalaria, because Scalaria doesn't care how many ghouls I stick in a fort, and he can just put a thousand undead on top and one turn pop it. Um, for the other nations, Naba we should add on here. You can see, it's going to be kind of hard to see because it's a little bit dwarfed by our graphs, but first place is Relay for army size. And he, this is, he's not, like, these aren't Lobo guards. These are super high quality meteorite guards. So that he actually may have some of the most impressive military might, even though he's not very high on the score graph. Um, Naba looks like they're in, they're beneath, uh, yes. And then Ashdod with the smallest uh, armies of the major players left. Um, I God, I wish I could get rid of some of these and we can just... I want to look at Jotunheim and Relay. 
if we look at Jotunheim and Relay, you can see Jotunheim took a big hit. And it doesn't look big here because, again, the scales are all messed up. But this was about, he lost about 30% of his army in this salvo. And this, I think, was a major loss for him. Because I think this was mostly all the Gam Herdings. Or not the Gam Herdings, but the Jotunheim equivalent. They're big sacred sword dudes. Um, I think that was when most of these died. I think most of the stuff that is left, it's some demon chaff, not demon chaff, some demons from Ritual of the Five Gates, which are high quality. Uh, a lot of this is foul spawn, though. Um, so this really represented, and you can see the Relay Army didn't didn't budge. Like, super duper uh, strong and scary. So anyway, um, there's that graph. Uh, one thing I will say is what you do not see in the graph with uh, Scalari and myself is, like, I take losses, but almost never do I take a major loss. And most of that... This is a little deceptive, because this graph is combining my ghoul graph with my army graph. If you looked at, like, my military power graph, like the, the units I can use in armies, this would be pretty major, because if you compare that, like, how high is this to the total size of my army at the time, it's probably, like, here. So this is probably, like, a 20% reduction in my total army size, which is significant. Um, but you can see we, we grow. A lot of this, again, the growth, a lot of the growth is ghouls. So there's that. Um, we'll pull all the score graphs back up, and I'm, we're just going to breeze through some of the other ones. I think we've talked about the most interesting ones. Um, forts. You can see Scalaria did pretty well, but we're chipping away at the Scalaria forts. Uh, and we are doing phenomenally on forts. We're, Relay, though, has a shit ton of forts. So does Yes. Relay number uh, number two in forts, though. Uh, and that's probably how they're getting all these uh, these meteorite guard, as they recruit anywhere, so they can just... They put forts, spread them out, take advantage of all the resources they can to get meteorite guard. Um, yeah. If we look at just Scalaria... We have done some major damage to Scalarian forts. He's down to about, we've killed, we've taken about a third of them away. But this picture, I think this is a pretty good picture for painting, and this picture, the army size and the forts, for showing how much damage we've done to Scalaria. We've done significant damage, but we have not done this much damage, right? This is by far overestimating how much damage we've done to Scalaria. Go ahead and turn these back on. So we've looked at Fort's income. will be interesting to see. I am definitely not going to be the leader there. Uh, the leader there, again, is Relay. So I think Relay is in a very clear position, too. Uh, I'm probably in position one, which is a little weird because I feel like Airmore... Like, the mid-game for Airmore is not super-duper great, especially versus Relay. Uh, and then Yis is in a position two for... Probably, I think Yis is... I'm sorry, position three. But they're in position two for income. And Naba is beneath them. And you can see Ashdod pretty low on income, actually. Um, but they're catching up. And then for me, uh, I'm way down here. Basically, the whole game. Um, but we're doing better now that we're invading Scalaria. And I finally have Pan's Capital and all of that shenanigans. Um... So anyway, that's really cool, I think, that we have the score graphs now. Uh, hopefully I'm able to hold on to the province and uh, kind of keep you guys updated on it. So yeah, um, plans for this turn. Well, we're going to be, okay, His, I want to be very careful moving anything important into things adjacent to his cap circle because if he chose to, he, which I don't think he will, he could move out the big doom stack from his capital and kill all my sacreds. So we're going to be cautious about that. Instead, what I'm going to do is the, the forts that he has that are not in his cap circle, I'm going to move to take those. So we've got the guys from here. They're going to come up here with... Uh, we basically have a bunch of our knights. And I think that this will be a stack big enough uh, to kill the um just these guys supported with cultists like with no mage support just priest support i think this will be enough but we'll take a lot of losses but whatever the main portion of the lictor stack 
is going to come over here. Um, and this is also where my Holy Four is going to go, Nardimu. And um, yeah, we're going to, we should one turn pop both of these forts. Uh, so long as we don't have a battle where we lose a bunch of dudes. And um, yeah, that would be pretty good because if, depending on where he moves his cap stack, or if I can lock his cap down again, I got a cheeky little squad of four dudes. Um, which, if he doesn't put PD up, which he hasn't always been doing, we'll take it. Hopefully, he's going to do that. Um, if he patrols with any number of dudes, we'll, we'll die, though. But it's worth it just because he hasn't been super religious about it. So it's worth it to at least try because locking down his cap is super duper valuable. Um, I mean, we get income from it, too. So it's like a very valuable raid. And we shut down a lot of undead production. And we limit his ability to come strike me off of nearby forts. Um, but this is, I don't think this will work, but it could work. Anyway. So yeah, we're coming up here. We're going to pop both of these. Um, that is the plan. And uh, also, we have... Um, We've gotten this province, which gives us access to the witch, which is a disease healer, among other things, um, and is sacred, so is reasonably low upkeep for, especially for nine research. Um, yeah, so we'll probably get these. I might actually start getting um, these shamans again. I got another one here this turn, but I might start getting more shamans, like more researchers. Um, as we start to crank out lightless lanterns, because that was the other thing. We finally got construction six, and uh, we have, what I've done is I've taken all of the research items, put them on as few mages as I can, basically, and then we're having everybody else make lightless lanterns. And then we're gonna shuffle, we'll see, you'll see next turn, because we're gonna do that this episode. We're gonna shuffle around again, um, and again, try to concentrate the items on as few mages as possible. And uh, we're going to make another round of lightless lanterns. And then as I turn production on, we're going to need to make three lightless lanterns a turn. One for this guy, one for this site, and one for this site. And that will hopefully get our research up to like 800. Whereas right now we're at 240. Um, so that will be super duper nice. Um, and construction six, while it seems like a little bit of a luxury, while we need to be kind of desperate not desperate because we're in an offensive war that we're kind of winning but we really need we can't win that war until we get enchantment six I'm, I'm we're stalling over here right we're getting peripheral things like i'm not running at him anymore we're messing with him um until i can get uh rigor mortis and grip of winter so um yeah that's basically the play trying to think what else uh in terms of gear we're forging elemental armor which i'm going to give to winter winter's empowering himself in air again and uh i think we're also making another frost brand up here i can't remember yeah we're making another frost brand so he might be dual wielding frost brands and uh that will be very good for killing more varks if they get stuck out on a province other than one of my forts um, so yeah, should be cool. Uh, I'll probably need to set up a test game for dealing with Yis, uh, like, because a lot of the things that Yis is going to do, like, Yis is one of those nations, too, that can just, like, kind of hard counter you, you know, like, having Blood Vengeance is pretty good at stopping that, because I, I can get them to kill themselves, but... You know, like, Yis can have some little raiding squads that are going to come around here and pop my forts, which would be annoying as hell. Um, but having some undead won't matter. You know, and then even, like, whether Winter can kill them is going to be pretty dependent on a bunch of things. <sighs> Especially since he's cursed. <laughs> uh, anyway, but Elemental Armor is going to be nice. It's going to have higher base protection than the Plate Hopper, and it's going to give me all the resistances, so... He's already got some fire resistance from the hat, but uh, yeah, should be okay. But I can't really, I don't want to use him against Scalaria, 
there's really nobody I'm going to want to use him against as a, as a super combatant, except maybe Yis. Because Yis isn't, while Yis has a fair amount of astral, they don't, they're not like an astral powerhouse. Um, we're also going to need, we'll just, I'll, I'll pull it up. I've already done this turn, so I don't have to worry about messing anything up. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the gear we're going to need to get him. Um, he's going to need, I might have to empower Putra Skater in water too. Um, and that way he can make, I'm going to want to do Rune Smashers. So he's going to need a Rune Smasher probably. Um, then I'm probably going to need a Ring of Returning for him. Um, I don't think I'm going to do an Eye of the Void, but I probably will do a Spell Focus thing. And then I might do Eye of the Void. I don't think he's going to be a very good Super Combat in this game. Even though he has a ton of HP and that's cool and all, I, he's just not... The, the nations I'm going to have to fight against... He's. I just won't ever feel comfortable using him as a super combatant, really ever. And I know these players. Sakane will murder him. Um, I can maybe use him a little bit against Ernie. He's playing yes. Just because they're not an astral powerhouse, and he. So we'll see. I, I might. I have the void him after the yes conflict has concluded itself, because he might be kind of useful against yes. But he's not going to be useful against JB, who's playing um, Naba. Um, and definitely not against Relay. Definitely, definitely not against Relay. So we'll see. Uh, what I mean, what I can still do with him, though, and this is why we'll transition him to probably only being a Wind of Death caster, is I can stack him our gear on him. I can put him with a group of dudes, you know, like some ghouls and some skeletons, that'll serve as kind of a screen and then he can just blast away at an army so that'll be nice let's actually look at real quick at relay i cannot remember how long these guys live max age 500 jesus okay so if he gets mass regen off then this is not going to work very well it will kill his slave majors though but the star children it's not going to kill and these guys, it's not going to kill. Now, it could kill, it could technically kill the Star Children, which would be big. For it to kill the Star Children, though, I would have to basically time out the battle. So it could be in like a major fight, like a major, major fight. Um, I, I have the major fight, which is going to go a really long time. And I Wind of Death spam, which will nuke my own army. And then I just accept the fact that my army dies. But if the battle goes to like turn 70, especially if I've got like rigor mortis up and I'm doing like a normal fight, um, then it will also basically guarantee these guys die. Because if I can get them up to 200, then they're, they'll start taking, uh, there's a chance they die. Though maybe not, I'm not sure. And then these guys are not anywhere close to dying. So these guys, I think, live a long time. So not going to be terribly good against Relay. Against Naba, it should be a lot better. Um, Naba's stuff. So like this is, in my opinion, the workhorse mage for Naba. They will die from Wind of Death. Um, the troops will die. Oh, actually, they won't. Uh, troops are immune. The Malika are probably immune. No, these guys are right on the edge of being immune. The Malika, or Malika, yeah. They are not gonna die. These guys definitely will die. So we'll be okay against these guys. And then Ashdod, let's take a look at them real quick. Because we will be going evocation. I'm not sure the timing of it, but it's really good. Um, that's why I need to I think it's time to get the three mage per turn thing going oh these guys the Tamari elders Ooh, that's so good that'll kill them um, the add-ons not very good against them these guys I think it's 
Yeah, right on the edge of maybe working. These guys, are, like, I think when they're up here, like, at 50-something, 60 years to live, I'm going to need to do it as conjunction of a major battle. And in that case, I don't even know how to do I'd probably do Wailing Winds, and then i just start dropping Wind of Death on everybody. And then these dudes, in mines, who are actually not horrible. Yeah, not super effective. So not really great. And yes, I think it'll work pretty well on. But I'm actually not very worried about the matchup with yes. But I could totally eat my words for that in a while. <sighs> um. So yeah, we're probably going to... I don't know how high we'll empower him. We might empower him all the way up to three. But that's a little wasteful. Uh... Once we have a, a ring of wizardry, if I choose to empower him up to uh, air three, then he can forge the air hat, which would be pretty nice. Um, anyway. I have to think about it. Maybe there's some other way to do it. It's probably not. Probably not. Anyway, this this is what we've got. This is what we've got. I, it, it, he'll be pretty multi-purpose. Being able to be a magic face thug. I mean, technically, too, especially now that I'm astral... Th I mean, now that I'm construction six... I can get all of my Dusk Elders with a crystal coin and a hat. Or, like, this guy, with because he's astral two, with just a hat. I can get him up to astral three, and he can teleport. And if there are things that he can kill, which if I make the gear, there's a decent chance that, uh, you know, like I give him um, a Shroud of the Battle Saint. And, uh, you know, I can kit him out depending on what we have to kill. But like, make sure he has a little bit of fire resistance. The thing with magic phase attacks is uh, I will know a lot of times whether I need to worry about magic duel or not. And so these guys are actually still useful for magic phase attacks. So... I think that's opened up, and, it, you know, it's good, I think, that I've come back and recorded this. Because I wasn't really thinking about how much I've unlocked these guys. So it may be, instead of doing three Archbishops a turn, because I got the uh, the big Death Gem trade, um, it may be I need to get at least a few more Archbishops. I mean, I'm sorry, Dusk Elders. Uh, and then I can start using them for things. But again, it's going to be very strategic, and I'm not going to need that many. Um, the strategic part, basically, because um, I, I'm not going to be able to use them like a bully, you know? Like, I can't be like, oh, I'm going to put them on top of your fort. Like, they can't know they're coming. And I can't use them where I don't know or have a good idea what the response is going to be. So, like, the places I would use them are, like, if I see what's here, I see what's here. Right, or I'm attacking the bot, he's raiding me, I'm sending somebody, you know? Or I'm, like, sniping down these uh, temples. And the nice thing about Dusk Elders, while they're vulnerable to, um, to magic duel, they are essentially immune or highly resistant to mind hunt. Uh, and they're stealthy. So as long as the province I'm attacking, attacking doesn't have a magic dueler in it, uh, we should be okay. So anyway, there's that. Um, let's go ahead and go to the next turn. My current turn. So uh, they break out here. They break out here. I just left one guy on top of these forts because I was moving guys off. Um, we have a big battle in Jotunheim. Uh, I want to show you this thing first in Scalaria. <laughs> I, I go and I'm like, he's got one PD on top of Scalaria. Come on, buddy. I've been doing this every turn. I've been busting your balls. You've got to put up some PD, man. I ba barely win with two horsemen, so it's kind of hilarious. Um, But no other fights for me. Now, the, the big things are here. Uh, we've got a battle in Jotunheim. And this is all Jotunheim has left. Uh, he's got some demons. He's got his foul spawn. Um, he's got his gaijas. He's got this lady. I don't know what she does. 
and this I I don't really know the new Jotunheim stuff. I haven't played against them before. But I mean I know there's Vydras and anyway. He's got these hearses. It's kinda odd this guy has a shit ton of death gems on him. I wonder what that was for. I wouldn't have minded him. He's got a vampire lord, interesting. And a lot of blood slaves. It looks like he may be going for a bloodletting play, as I suggested to him. I don't think there's enough blood slaves, though. Because for him to kill, you have to look at these guys. Um, they have 14 protection, You're and they have enough magic resistance, especially with anti-magic. You, I think you honestly have to cast bloodletting eight times to kill a lot of them, to cause an HP route, which is a lot. Because eight blood, um, eight bloodlettings is also going to kill a lot of your dudes, like a lot of your blood slaves. If you run out of blood slaves, you can't keep casting bloodletting. Um, so the Sabbath, there goes bloodletting one. Let's watch this again, though. I want to make sure we count how many happen. So he casts bloodletting, interrupts some people's spells. Hilgadon. These seem like the names of oh, he's got a thug. It's a scrotty thug here. Lightning reflexes. Hello, it looks like another casting of it. Heart Rot prepares to cast Bloodletting. I tell you, Bloodletting, I, I have never, I'll, I'll be honest, I've, it's one of the things I, in theory, can work. And I've seen people try to, I've tried to use it. I've never seen a real good stack wipe with Bloodletting. It is really hard to pull off. And a lot of it has to do with, like, interrupting your own mages, killing off your own blood slaves. There goes another one. He cast it again, so that's three. There may be enough left here for one more. There's another one, that's four. He's out of slaves. He's probably scripted to do it again. Back here, there's just this... These guys are jumping in here, and Gifts of Heaven, and there's just huge mind blast in spinning. Like, how do you... It's so hard to deal with. If I'm fighting this army, I have to bring probably, like, 300 ghouls just to soak up mind blasts. I also do need to think about getting golems. Because golems are the only way I can reliably get anti magic up. I mean, he tried. I think, it, you know, sometimes in Dominions it's checkmate. And uh, this was a good try. We can kind of see, I mean, they're not regenerating. We can kind of look at the... Elithid. We can see how close we got. Or he got. See, most of them it didn't hit. Yeah, it was not really very close. Problem is they have really good MR. Plus, um, yeah. It means most of the time it's not gonna hit. It's, it's not easy negates or anything. I think it's just normal. So it's gonna be a check versus 12, but you have to think about it. Like, a third of them are going to hit now with 16 MR. And... Or thereabouts. And you're probably going to have to hit them. I think it's three damage plus a dice roll. Um, and you're probably going to have to hit them... 
three or four times. So it, really the math is probably close to like 12. You have to do a lot. And then how do you get your blood slaves to survive through that much? It's pretty tough. Very, very tough. You know, fighting guys that don't have good access, like that, like fighting Ulm, it would make a lot more sense. Because Ulm has shit MR. They have really high protection. They can get anti-magic up, but they're not, it's not like super easy for them. But I don't know what you do against this. Like, this is the kind of stack that if you get behind and you don't have a big enough army to fight them conventionally, it's very, very hard to cheese this. And it's also a super scary army to fight conventionally. So, yeah, seems hard. Let's look at again, uh, the battle again, because I might end up having to fight Relay sooner than I'd like to um, from Relay's side. So let's see what he did. Because I have no idea what his research is. I haven't even looked at this battle yet. So we've got the communion. Storm demons shooting their stuff in, which is nice. Very good at blood letting. Summon earth power. Summon earth power. I think he's doing gifts of heaven casting. Magic duels coming out. So he's doing magic duels with this guy. Interesting. Gifts of heaven coming out from his slave mages. Power of the Spheres. What are these guys doing up here? Winter Ward. Poison Ward. So he's trying, he's preparing for Foul Vapors. Foul Vapors would be really good here. Yeah, that would have been good if he also got Foul Vapors up. I know he Foul Vapored this army before. So yeah, he's got Poison Ward on a lot of these guys. But not all of them. Relay is probably waiting till he has Serpent's Blessing to do, to mess with me. Just smart. Thanks for heaven. The spells we have up right now are Light of the Northern Star, Relief, and Divine Channel. Weapons of Sharpness can be interesting. So he's at least Construction 7. Maybe Construction 8. Wind of Region, Bag of Wine. I don't see any artifacts, though. Let's look at all these important guys. Not a lot of items in this group. Try the battle center. Let's see his bless. I haven't looked at that yet. Defense skill plus three. Reinvigoration plus two. MR1. Penetration bonus. Recuperation. Oh, man. Fuck me. This is like my least favorite. This is from a throne, the defense skill. This is like my least favorite bless to fight. This is the Janohito relay build, basically. It's a little different. I think he took a little bit higher astral. So he potentially can do... He's got... This is astral 1, astral 4, astral 1. So he's astral 6 on his god. Um, Astral 6, and then I forget what Recuperation is. I think it's like 5. And this is Earth 4. So this looks like a monolith, honestly. We've got Astral, Earth, and Nature. So I think he took... I don't know if Relay can take a monolith, but it's what it looks like. Um, ay ay ay. This, they're scary, man. I don't know what to do. I mean, like, if this army comes and attacks me, first of all, it's huge. It's like 600. Um, the, they can maybe even one turn pop my forts. Uh, I can still Bane Venom charm them, but it's going to be slow, and I'm going to lose infrastructure. Yeah. Don't really want to fight them. 
Maybe, but honestly, by the time they fight them, I can probably have an army of like 500 sacreds, which might be able to take them. Especially if I have anti-magic up. Foul Vapors will be sort of helpful. But he'll have mass regen and anti-magic, and these guys have a shit ton of MR. Like, can you imagine these guys? Once they have regen... Like these guys when they have regen, the star children. Reasonably high base HP. Regening two a turn. And they're going to be sniping one guy off. Or like something. You know, I... Ooh, it's giving me flashbacks to fighting Grillet, uh in my last Airmore game a few years ago. I haven't played Airmore in a really long time. So that's scary. Then he storms the fort... And it's just him and uh, the monolith. And the monolith is now paralyzed for three turns. So rip casting anything. And uh, ends up getting so slayed. So that is it. Uh, everyone, poor went out for Jotunheim. They died to the squids, which is the worst way to die. We all know that. Um, and yeah, this turn we're going to need to go after, uh, I, you know, when, we'll pull this up when we actually have the turn, but, uh oh, part of the population turned to horrors. That's not good. A huge barbarians attack me. That's not good. We got some nature gems. Brigands have taken up residence and then death gems in our capital air gems. And then a white major is wounded. White major. That's our God. One of our gods shrunk. Okay. Got attacked by Barbs, and we repelled it. We got attacked by Soul Torn, we repelled it. We got attacked by Naba, always. This Naba scouts. I wonder how many he's actually, like, gotten through. Like, how many he has in my lands I haven't detected. Because so, I'd like to think it's none, but I'm sure he's gotten a few through. If it were literally none, he would give up. Um, we got seven gold from Pillaging Morn. And let's take a look at the map. The world is in a very unstable place right now. We have uh, End that just get con got conquered. So this actually is the most stable portion of the world, the Naba area. We have Satis, though, uh, that is getting conquered now by Ashdod. And Ashdod's still busy sieging through things and probably has some assassins and stuff he's he's dealing with. But Satis has effectively fallen. Um, Scalaria and I are in a deep state of war. Um, but... Scalaria is slowly falling. Uh, Jotunheim has had his capital sniped now, and all his armies are dead, and so all this land is up for grabs. Yes has said he wants to attack me. Now, we technically can issue attack orders this turn, um, though there's been a development in that, and the development is uh, he doesn't want to interfere very much. I haven't even really asked them. I, I was just saying, well, you know, he was like, you know, his message to me was like, I think we should fight. What do you think? And I replied back, well... I was hoping I could finish off, you know, like do it, do a killing blow to Scalaria before we fought, but it's cool. We can fight. And he was like, well, if you want to finish Scalaria, you can. And I'm like, okay. I mean, he's like, I thought Scalaria was basically done. And I was like, well, we've knocked him down some pegs, but he still has about like three or 4,000 guys in his capital that can kill any stack I send at them, which is true. I cannot take his capital right now. I literally... He would kill... He's already killed, like, 300 sacreds. He would easily kill another 300. Um, not 300 in that first army. I think it was, like, 160 or something in the, the army he killed. But, like, here I lost a lot. When I failed this, I lost, like, 50. And then I probably lost another 100 throughout the course of the whole war. And, like, the fights that I quote-unquote won. You know, I lost a lot of sacreds, each of those. So, um, anyway. He would easily, I think, win another major fight against me until I get rigor mortis and group of winter. Um, and ideally I kind of chip away at him uh, until I get to that point but I definitely cannot like go kill Scalaria now that is not in the that is not a card in my in my deck um, so anyway I, I just told we were chatting in discord and I told him that and uh, he's like well uh, we were also talking I was like how is it like it's interesting you're attacking me because relay is huge and powerful um, I mean, like, I'm big and strong, too, but, like, you don't stand to gain a ton, but
but I can understand wanting to attack me. Like, I'm not going to discourage it if you think it's the right thing to do. Um, but I was, like, very surprised that he would... Because what happens if he attacks me and he loses, like, 150 more hearts? Which is, by the way, the thing that Yes is always fucking terrified about. Because you lose 150 more hearts, you're never getting them back. Like, they're cap only. They're extremely hard to replace. But, like, what happens if that happens and Relay just eats him? And he's like, I don't have a border with Relay. And I was like, what? How can you not have a border with Relay? Because Relay went this way and ate Fascia. So I don't have a border. Um, and I was asking, I was like, well, okay, well, who owns this throne? Well, this throne is owned by Ashdod, right? So Ashdod, pretty big now, right? Um, and then above them, Naba owns all of this. So there's actually this land bridge is big enough that even though uh, Relay took all of this, they did not get this portion of the land bridge. So anyway, Relay, they ate Fascia, they took some of the surrounding things, and then they marched this same army that took Fascia straight into Jotunheim. I, I doubt it stopped for more than a turn or two. And this army is probably going to go kill someone else, which very good chance it's me, or they're going to march down and try to take Scalaria. Um, or they're going to march up this way, and deal with Ashdod, or they're going to march through and go eat Yis. But because there's a land bridge they would have to fight through, I'm thinking it's less likely they go for Yis. Um, I think it's more likely they come for me, like go into my heart, like go for this throne, they go for Scalaria, or they go for Ashdod. Um... But anyway, you can see the world is in chaos right now. Scalaria is teetering on the edge of a knife, um, though definitely not dead yet. But they're they're in a state of limbo. Jotunheim has just everything's dead. There's no let's look at the Jotunheim army graph. There's literally nothing. And it's like a smidgen of a smidgen. Meanwhile, on province count, Jotunheim still has half of his stuff. All right, so there's just going to be a land grab for Jotunheim. Uh, and I'm going to be playing part of that. So, God, ideally I get somebody even up here. I don't think, it, maybe I can actually. But, uh, yeah. So ton of instability like there's it makes me think of the little finger quote from game of thrones chaos is the ladder right now the world is in just chaos and disarray and there is so much to be gained from it you know like i could backstab relay kill all these temples raid underwater kick him off the land um you know i don't have a nap with ashdod i could come over here and knock him off these forts but meanwhile i'm like stuck in my own thing with scalaria uh, Jotunheim over here. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to get, but I'm going to try to get as much as I can. And then Yis is about to attack me. So, I mean, just, it's so chaotic right now. It's a, it's a kind of fun time to be in the game. You know, it's not like a boring game where nobody's doing everything. It's like, there's so much happening. Anyway, so let's talk about what we're going to do. We'll start with Sclair. We have pinned him in his cap again. Hell yes. Give me that 85 gold. Um, we've also got a fair amount of unrest on his cap from all the... I, I don't even know how that works, but I think when provinces switch hands, there's a chance to generate unrest. Uh, anyway, we've got six... I, I think he also blood on his cap. Because there was no... La his lab burnt down. He put a message in the group chat about it. His lab burnt down, so he couldn't do anything with his god except blood hunt. Um, but now he's got unrest in his cap from that, and also probably from the raiding... And then, um, yeah, his big army from here, which was here, has moved here, right? And anyway, um, he busted out with 100 long dead here. And we have moved our army here. So this force could kill all the undead we see. So we're going to go ahead and storm, and I've got just a boatload of lectors. So this is going to be basically a free win. Um, this group up here, I'm much less confident about. What I may need to do, and I didn't do it, but I probably should. Let me turn on... It's 20. This is enough to get sacreds. 
this group can kill an indiscriminately large amount of dudes just from all the lictors. I think what I need to do, and I think I'm going to do it, is I need to put all my a lot of the knights on one of these guys. I'll look through this down here. Oh gosh, too many lictors. Eighty, eighty. Okay, these will be in the. I'll put these in the back. So, I think what I need to do now is I need to take these idiots, and these guys are map move twenty now, and turn back on the armies. And I need to run him back up here onto this fort. Because if he comes and tries to knock me off, we're, you know, it's going to be rough. So I've got um, Chill Wind coming in. Chill Wind is, was up here. I moved them last turn. There's not a lot of sacreds here. I've got, if you look at what's here right now, I've just got these guys, like 17. Um, and these guys are going to be fluffing with uh, Unholy Power and stuff. 17 would be pushing it to kill all of these, like if everybody attacked. Because these guys, he if he wanted to, he could take all of these stacks and move in here. I probably would kill it, but it would be really close. I think what I want to do instead is we've got these guys in here. And I think what I'm going to do is just have these guys on hold and attack rear. They'll be in front. They'll take a little bit of the brunt of the damage. And that way it'll leave more guys for storming the castle. Meanwhile, we're going to take uh, Fechuntu and go right up here. And this will get us a bit more of the Jotun territory. Um, now, ideally, and I probably could manage it because I'm bringing in these reinforcements. G2, can he make it all the way over here? Yes. So I think G2, we uh, we do this. Just leave Vettis in here. Start putting this under siege. And then if you look at who's here, Fish2, you're the only one going. Got to remember to remove them. If we look at who's left, I don't have a ton of people storming the fort, but I think it's enough. I think it's enough. We'll see. I have no idea what's inside, really. It's like 100 guys will probably be okay. We'll see. All right, Finch, you, you come back over here. This will give us claim to this, and then Relay will just probably stick with taking all of this, but this will give us a lot of the Jotun lands. And importantly, we're moving out a pretty big squad with some Lictors in it. Uh, it's about 100, 120, 120, 120, 80, I think there's about 600 dudes, so we'll easily one turn pop this for it. Um, there's not much population left, so we'll have to go ahead and uh, colonize it immediately. Um, yeah. Hopefully we can get a few turns of income before it gets completely depopulated. Uh, we're going to be sending a small raiding squad here underwater, and we're going to be sending a small raiding squad here. And uh, this, again has been in my dominion for a little bit and was not probably a terribly high income place to start with. So shit income, shit income, like nine, three, but you know, could have magic sites and we could put a fort there potentially. Um, and we can deny it from the squids. So there's that. This is probably about as greedy as we'll be. I think we'll leave the rest to the squids and hope he goes elsewhere. Um, but after he comes over here and one turn pops this fort, it very well could be he decides that's enough. Or he gets this one and this one. I don't really know. We'll see. 
if he wants to come and fight me, I don't exactly have a plan. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Um, the plan is hope we have enchantment seven. And uh, importantly, he does not have cold resistance yet, like on everybody. So we can still do fatigue plays. You know, like, he, first of all, it's not in his bless. Second of all, his troops don't have it. Like, you know, the meteorite guard don't have cold resistance. So we can still do that. Um, I can still foul vapors him. So I have tools. They're not great tools, but I have tools. Uh, we also are one turn away from finishing Blood Magic, Blood 3. And you're like, Air Lusu, what are you doing? Blood 3 on Airmore? Yeah, we need to get Blood Feast. I need to get this effing Affliction mute off of this god because I want to have high nature. I've got a phenomenal nature income, and I'm not going to have it wasted because I don't have high nature on my god. So I think what we do... Um, we're gonna do blood feast. That should we'll do it until we get rid of all our afflictions. Uh, maybe not never healing wound because that takes a while to go away. Um, then we're gonna make sure we have blood boots. I mean uh, the boots of youth or whatever for all of our gods. So that'll take. It's basically ten blood slaves a piece. And uh, then we will go suicide into one of the Islands. Should have one. You know, cast regen and then attack. And uh, they will come back as a gray one in our capital, wherever our capital is. And uh, then we will have to twice born again. We do not have transformation researched yet, which allows me f to potentially get a tart. So anyway, none of those shenanigans. But uh, that would be interesting. I, I, it's not going to be in the cards, though. And, I mean, to hell with super combatants versus all these astral nations anyway, so I don't even really want it. Uh, I just want to have a caster I can use independently. And having my gods... My gods have just been researching. They've really just been getting me to this point where I can start using them to, like, forge stuff, uh, to cast things in combat. Now that I have Lightless Lanterns, my research is not going to be very dependent on them anymore. If you recall, last time my research was, like, 240. Now it's 350. Um, and we're making a shit ton more lanterns, and which basically going to give everybody here a lantern. Um, I was doing a bit of upgrading. We're building a temple here. We're upgrading this fort. Uh, we have a temple here. I'm building a temple here. Um, yeah, so anyway, we're doing that. And, but I'm kind of wondering actually if I want to. Maybe we make a long dead. I do want to turn on this every turn. I want to get one of these shamans. They're very bad for research, but they're pretty low on upkeep. Their upkeep is, you know, 36 a turn. And so with boosters on them, they're actually okay researchers per gold. So... I think we do that. I don't think, you know, I could, I might come through and like check out my, who I can get, make sure it's not changed too much. Uh, wait, what is that? It's a deer tribe, wolf tribe. I forget which ones are which for being efficient. Woodhenge, like a little bit more money. I want like dirt cheap ones. I think the ones I have are the most dirt cheap for uh, for upkeep. The could be like these Micklin ones. The no, these are expensive because they're holy too. Um, what about like Lion Tribe? I feel like Lion Tribe might be. Where's the Lion Tribe? I know I saw one lion tribe. Unless my eyes deceive me. I'm like looking at these little tiny icons. You probably wouldn't be able to tell in the video. Deer tribe. I think the one we have, like, I think this is Zanstra. Yeah, I think the other one 
deer tribe we can check out. Yeah, they're basically the same. They're 90 gold. I think they have a different random for their cross path. I guess I could get more of those. I could find which places I would want to build them. But I think we're going to... Anyway, we're going to have three mages per turn coming out. I'd like to get up to, like, at least 800 research. Which we can do. Um, I think we've talked enough about what's happening. We're trying to take this fort with a bunch of sacreds. We're trying to take this one. This one I don't think they can stop. This one's going to be a bit more of a dice roll. Um, and then after that, we're probably going to go take this one. Uh, and then probably lay siege to one or both of these. Uh, we've got a fair number of dudes here on top of this fort. We should crack it next turn, but maybe turn after. I do not have a nap with these guys, so they may choose to knock me off. That'll be kind of hilarious. Um, Sakane, not a very aggressive player, though. He's, he's very good, but not very aggressive. So we don't have a nap. If we didn't have a nap and I saw this, and I was him, there's a very good chance I'd come just knock his army off. Because um, I'm sometimes an asshole like that. But Sakne is a very nice person. Uh, not an asshole. And also not super aggressive. Very cautious. Uh, and goes into to wars and things very deliberately. Um, and is not very rash. I'm a bit more hot-headed. But he very well still knocked my ass off. That would be hilarious. Um... So we're taking these, we're raiding up here. Uh, a few last things before we close out. Um, I want to make the Ring of Wizardry, right? And I'll just show it to you. So um, there's two of them, right? This one requires you to be Astral 6, gives you plus one to all the sorcery paths, which is Nature, Death, Astral, and Blood. And then there's this one, which requires you to be uh, Astral 7, and it gives you one to every path. And this is the one we want. Now, you can use, if, a lot of times if you're short, like you, you're not quite Astral 7, you're Astral 6 after all your items, a lot of times you'll make the Ring of Sorcery to jump you into getting the Ring of Wizardry. But we're going to be high enough that we can go straight to the Ring of Wizardry because uh, we're Astral 5. Um, with the Crystal Coin, we get 6. With the Starshine Skull Cap, we get 7. And then we can make it. So we're making, the, we already have a Crystal Coin. We're making a Starshine Skull Cap. Uh, and then we will be able to cast it, or, or forge it. Um, and that'll put a pretty big dent. It's 80 pearls, so it'll put a big dent in our pearls. But it's going to open up all sorts of things for us to do. Um, um, Putre Skater is now Fire 3. And so when he has that, he can make himself a Fire Hat. And uh, with the Fire Hat, he's going to be... Um, God, actually, I'm thinking about it now. I had mentioned maybe putting water on him um, to do a Rune Smasher, but water on him will also open up uh, Staff of Elemental Mastery. Uh, and that is because water is one of the easier things to boost. So for him, I give him a Ring of Wizardry and a water booster, like a water bracelet, and put the Robe of the Sea on. And um, that will give him a combined three bonus to water um, and it's going to give him one bonus to fire, and that will give him four water, four fire, which means I can do a staff elemental mastery, which is just one empowerment in water, which will then get me to very high elemental path access. So I think we'll do that. Uh, we're making a stone idol, because I'm going to try. There was an enemy candle in Pangea. Next turn, there's going to be my candle, probably. And I don't want that. And I'm delaying putting temples over here. I just canceled the temple I was going to build here. Because I don't want this dominion spreading south any faster than it has to. I think I was maybe thinking about building a temple here too, because it's got my dominion. I really don't want to accelerate it. So there's that. We're just going to delay. We've got the infrastructure up. We don't have to worry about about too much. Um, and I think what, one thing I want to do is I'm very concerned about ghoul density. Um, you may say, Lucid, how are you in position one and nobody, like, why isn't everybody ganging up on you? The answer is all these fucking ghouls. Because nobody's going to be able to siege through it in any reasonable amount of time. And if they'd have to do super high commitment stuff to just siege through it and I kill one of them, then they're fucked and I get all their land. So that's why. 
And they don't even know, but I'm going to Bane Venom Charm the shit out of them if they have an army on top. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm worried about ghoul density. We've gotten... God, I can just talk forever, can't I, guys? This turn, this episode... It's so much different when I'm doing my casting from, like, my current turn versus, like, a turn in the future. Where, I mean, like, when I'm playing in the future, I'm coming back trying to catch up. So much I can talk about it. So if we look at the Siege Defense here, everything is above 200 now. This one's 440 or 480. Um, so anyway, I've balanced out a lot of my ghoul levels. And we're I want to get them to 300. Um... But you can see, if we zoom out, look at the ring. Can you see the ring? The ring is on my ghouls. I have my ghouls on the periphery. The inside is hollowed out. Um, but not completely. Like, here we're moving... Well, we're moving troops. Honestly, I need to move ghouls. I'm going to put a big troop deposit here. Um, but I do need to get... Okay, we've got... Well, he can go and... Well, no, I guess we'll leave him here. I got somebody else coming to pick him up. He, he's going to come over here. We're going to shuffle these guys into these forts down here or something. Um, and then Pangea, we're just ghoulifying like crazy. Um, and then we were ghoulifying over here, too. We got a palisade coming up. Um, but this province actually isn't going to do much. This one will block off both of these, and then I can pull the ghouls forward. I really do need to fort this. I think I may have enough time to finish. And I can put a big scary army here. I've got a big scary army. I think I may cancel one of these temples. And start fort construction. And now technically our nap is over. So I think what I may do I think what I may do is go ahead and move a bunch of these guys over here. And prepare for Yis to attack me, even if he doesn't. Um. Doing hold and attack, hold and fire, hold and attack. Anyway. That's probably okay. And we're going to start the fort construction. This is a little ballsy because Yis might attack me, and who knows how many mo more Varks there are. We know there's at least some Yisian Druids. We don't know how many. But th why, why I want to get this forted is it's going to allow me to pull my ghouls out of both. Once this fort goes up and this fort goes up, I can evacuate ghouls from here and here and put them in these other provinces, which will be nice. Because just this one going up doesn't actually... I still have to have the ghouls here until this one comes up. So anyway, that'll give me a nice, efficient border. Um, but I do want more ghoul production. So I might want to turn on one more. I know I've got priests coming out of here. Uh, I've got finally got witches coming out of here. I haven't made one yet, but they're getting made this turn. I guess I could make them here, but it's like a slow walk down. Maybe this is enough. So anyway, more. I need more priests to do more ghoul reanimation, because like if you look at these forts, I'm only at one fifty. And now this one is going to be rising very, 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 very quickly. But I don't know. Maybe I'm overreacting. I, I want to have more ghouls on this front so that Pangea can't take forts. I mean, uh, Yis can't take forts. And honestly, I'm not going to have... I can't have too many, especially like with Relay running around with these 600 stacks. Um, if I get all of Scalarius stuff, I will have decisions to make. Um, some of those decisions are going to be, do I start 
templing these forts that I have or like generally depopulating this area. And I think we're going to try to avoid it. Um, but then I also have a decision, okay, do I fort this area up and not depopulate, which is kind of what I've done here. And like, I've got a bunch of forts here without, this one has a temple, but no temple, no temple, no temple. And instead I can funnel the money into upgrading these border provinces uh, and giving myself the tier three forts, which they're not going to do anything in terms of giving me better free spawn. Like this fort, the upgrade from one to two gives you better free spawn, but the two to three does not, but the three to four does. But I can't do the three to four unless I have a, uh, a mason. Um, but the difference between 250 and 500 wall strength is a lot, especially when you have that kind of siege defense I do. Um, it means it's very, very hard to one turn pop, which gives me a lot of time to react. Um, so anyway, there's that. Um, I think... I think we're getting uh, to the point where I can call it an end for the episode. So summary, we're being super greedy over here. We're fucking around with Scalaria and trying to basically stall until I get enchantment six, which uh, will be, we're, we're at about 300, but next turn or in a turn or two, we'll be up to, we'll be at 500 probably pretty quick. So if we say 500, we'll be above 500. So the average is going to be, um, 500 we've got five turns so in about five turns we'll have oh i'm sorry 500 soon but not this turn almost three turns will be at enchantment six so fuck i actually have to get my ass over here forging a water bracelet mm, let's fucking go because there's a chance Nineteen to get here. I probably stage with her here. Move a water bracelet out. Oh crap! I've got these guys too. We can actually do a tiny bit more min maxing while I'm here on with you. Let's go ahead and send these to the lab. Let's have you make a lightless lantern. Let's send these to the lab. Let's have you make a lightless lantern. Let's give these to you. And one thing I want to look for I've got these lying around. Maybe what we'll do. I think that's right. Oh no, but I can. I'm like really trying to min max research here. I'm trying to find who I have, uh, where my mages, and make sure they're all. Oh shit, I didn't say I had another one. So anyway, um, was this put my research at? Turns are gonna like tiny bits are gonna matter for what turn I get uh, rigor mortis. So three seventy, that's twenty more. Um, and it's gonna give me more lightless lanterns next time. I think I got one more lightless lantern out of that shuffling around. So I want to have my god over here. I've got salt. Now, salt is not going to need, oh, I think I also, yeah, we've got one of these. So salt is not going to need anything to do grip of winter. Grip of winter, you only have to be uh, water three with three gems. So maybe I give her nine, cast it three times. Um, so anyway, we've got water or salt moving over there. Now, ideally, I would have some kind of movement boosting shenanigans, but I don't have that. It's okay. One, two. Uh, 
Um, it's only two water gems, right? Group of one or two. Yeah, okay. So it'll knock her out, but she shouldn't take HP damage. I was wondering if she's going to get afflictions from it. Ideally, I get uh, a water bracelet, which I was going to make, but I think next turn, turn after, turn after. You know what I think I do, actually? I think we're, we wait one turn. I make a water bracelet. I think down here where I was like, getting super greedy, I want her to move faster. We're going to go ahead and make uh, Boots of the Messenger, which is going to be nice for her to have. And then I don't have to worry. Or then she'll be able to get over here faster. Like I think she'll be able to make the jump from here to here in one turn. So that'll be nice. Um, it may not actually cost us anything except a tiny bit or except basically forging one lantern on this person research. So that'll be good. Um, I also already have, we'll unload these. I don't think Winter's first deployment is going to be as a super combatant. Instead, I think he's going to cloud, once I'm, we'll probably cloud trap him over here and he's gonna do rigor mortis is what's gonna happen. Um, the other thing we can consider making is we actually have the paths to do the Ancient Casket, which four temporary death gems, which means it's actually going to be a lot of economy on doing rigor mortis, especially with, I think I might make this actually. I can actually make this this turn. And that would save me death gems. Too low a level? Oh fuck, this thing didn't actually work. Shit. Well, next turn I'll make it. Anyway, we're gonna blood hunt for now. We'll have winter research with the skull staff. Give him that little tiny bonus. Um, next turn, we're gonna do blood feast. Turn after, we'll do, we'll probably make the cask, the casket, which will give him the temporary death gems. And um, about that time, we'll be ready to have the final battle in Scalaria. So anyway, that'll be cool. Uh, we're probably gonna lose a ton of shit, but uh, great prizes demand, uh, demand great sacrifices and getting uh, Scalaria is gonna give us four death gems. So the price must be paid. One thing I did talk about though, that I think we're going to do uh, is instead of getting only archbishops, I'm gonna get at least a, one or two more dusk elders because I can now use them as thugs. Uh, and I have a fair amount of pearls, so we can go ahead and, you know, they're going to, most of them are going to need, well, ideally I have two Astral 2s. I've already got one. And so they're going to need a Starshine Skullcap. Um, then they're going to need uh, probably Stone. Let's, let's talk about the kit. Well, we'll do that in another episode. But anyway, I, I need to thug them out. We can do that soon. So uh, thanks for hanging in there. I know it was a long one. And I will see you next time.